happy to welcome back Brian Reynolds from the Butterflies of the World Foundation. Well, Brian, today we're going to install a fruit tray to attract some butterflies to the landscape. What types of butterflies will this draw in? Typically this will draw in uh, woodland butterflies, mm -hmm. ones that normally in nature will eat uh, things, not necessarily flowers, but more like tree sap, mm -hmm. uh, rotting fruit that will fall down naturally and, and uh, rot on the forest floor, and then the butterflies are attracted to that. Okay, and in a landscape, if you have a woody edge, that's a great perfect spot. And yes, we have a variety of trees here: some pecans and uh, hackberries, cotton cottonwoods. Yep, elms. All elms. those all those trees have their variety of butterflies that like to eat those as caterpillars. Okay, we have two different materials here, and I just looked for kind of scraps, things that I wasn't going to reuse, an old metal tray. A little piece of wood. Just about anything like that. That mm -hmm. size would work as long as it lasts in the, in the weather. Mm -hmm. It'd be perfect. We're just looking for something durable to put fruit on. Mm -hmm. Do we need to drill any drainage holes in this? It's not necessary, no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the rainwater will accumulate a little bit, but that'll kind of spread the juices around a little more. And have a nice little sugary syrup mm -hmm. in there. Okay. Well, this is pretty simple uh, to easy. install. I brought a screw for you, and we're just going to attach it to a post. <laughs> Is there any specific height that we want to put this in in the garden? Generally around waist height works pretty good. Okay. You have to be aware of attracting possibly unwanted wanted creatures like raccoons right. or possums. Anybody but... hungry might come in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then as far as the types of foods we put on there, uh, the, the older the better. Is that, yes. That's what you tell that's me. It, exactly. <laughs> yep. And um, you just put I have them on some there. oranges. Uh, mushy banana. Slice them up and basically yeah. just leave it okay. and they'll rot. Oh Ooh. nice and juicy. <laughs> yeah this one wasn't quite fit for a human consumption no. so I thought it would work well. Butterflies will love it. And we just want to expose the flesh so that they could come in That's and it. feed off of that. Walk away and come back tomorrow and I'm guessing you have butterflies all over it. Now you mentioned um, raccoons and other types of wildlife. Um, one of the things we have for squirrels that they don't get into are, are suet feeders. That's another excellent mm -hmm. thing if you have problems with raccoons. Take an old suet feeder, mm -hmm. fill it full of bananas, use a shepherd's hook yeah. or a chain or something and hang it, it out away mm -hmm. so the, the pest creatures that you don't want can't access it but the butterflies will just come flocking to it. Excellent. Well let's go take a look at what species are active this time of year. Sounds good. Okay. Brian, we've seen a lot of the flowers in our gardens bloom very early this year. Are you seeing the same pattern with butterflies? Absolutely. This early warm weather in the spring really has caused the butterflies to come out. So they're just emerging fresh. Yes. Um, they've accumulated all the warmth they need to come out. That's right. Fresh, beautiful butterflies, <laughs> definitely. And I've seen such a diversity here in the gardens today, just walking around. This ice plant seems to be a, a magnet for the painted ladies. Yes, um, it is. Are there other kind of related species to the painted ladies? They're very showy. Well, today I think we've seen American ladies mm -hmm. and also the red admiral, which is a close cousin to the to the other two, and common buckeye. Okay. And what are so, how are they grouped together? What are their similarities? Well, they're called a brushfoot and okay. it looks like that they only have four legs, but their first pair of legs is little a little bitty brush basically. Yeah. Mm. Very good. I've also seen quite a few, I know I call them the sulfurs, those bright yellows and oranges flying. Yes, today on these uh, lovely flowers we mm -hmm. saw the cloudless sulfur, also common orange sulfur, okay. dainty sulfurs, and the clouded sulfur. Okay, and these are all fairly common people yes. might see? Yes, all okay. of those are very common. Okay. There was a really interesting, um, very small butterfly. There's quite a few of the tiny ones. What, group do those belong to? Those are called gossamer wings and okay. we have two main kinds, mm -hmm. uh, the hair streaks and the blues. Mm -hmm. There was another that had a little red line on its wing. What was this one? It's called the red banded hair streak mm -hmm. um, and it has the little tails on the end of it and they like to eat rotting leaves as caterpillars. Interesting. And there was another that had a, a blue coloration on its wing. Those are very common. They're called eastern tail blues mm -hmm. and they're, they're actually sexually dimorphic and the males and females look a little different from each other. The males are the really bright blue ones and the females are more of a gray color. 
Kind of like birds. The, the males are the flashy, colorful ones. Exactly. Okay. Yep. But speaking of flashy, most butterfly enthusiasts really look for the big stuff. And I, I saw my first monarch today. Yes. What other big uh, butterflies are flying? Some of the big showy ones you can see right now are eastern tiger swallowtails, mm -hmm. uh, pipe vine swallowtails, spice bush swallowtails, and the state butterfly, the black swallowtail. All right. And uh, later this season, as our fennel grows, we'll start to look for some of the larvae on those. Now, are there certain species that are only active this time of year that we won't see later in the season? Yes, there's one that's out right now. It's a real beauty. It's called a falcade orange tip. And it also is sexually dimorphic. Okay. The males have bright orange wing tips and the females do not. All right, well, we'll have to keep our eye out for those and uh, all things great and small. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you.